Hey, this is Jeff from Jeffrey Mintz Photography and welcome back yet again to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for being here and thank you for watching it. Okay, let's get started. So I was really curious to see with the new A7R 3 what the differences would be when I look at a photograph taken on a tripod with the exact same exposure with raw uncompressed, which is what I normally shoot, raw compressed and JPEG. Now JPEG at the finest amount. Well, let's take a look. So here we are. We are looking at the three photos in Lightroom. The first one, let's go to the end. Okay, this one is a raw uncompressed photograph. This one is a raw compressed photograph. And this one is the JPEG in fine with all three taken with the Sony A7R 3 All right, let's go back. Why did I choose uh, this type of a photo? Well, because I wanted a really big dynamic range with darks and lights with a black point and a white point. So if you look up here at our histogram, you can see that I'm just about making a full black where there's no data. And on the right, I'm almost touching. Okay, now this is the uncompressed file that's raw. Let's arrow over and keep your eye on the histogram to the raw compressed. So raw uncompressed, raw compressed, very little difference. Okay, now let's take a look at the JPEG. Boom. All of a sudden with the JPEG, it looks like we're really walled off over here with our whites. Now, Here's a good test for this. Let's just go back to the raw uncompressed, okay? When I do raw uncompressed and I just go right to the shadows and I crank up the shadows all the way, I uncover everything that's in here that was uh, really dark. And if I zoom in, you can see, and I'm really zoomed in at three to one here. This is pretty heavy, okay? I still have a lot of data. Sure, there's some noise in there, but I'm in at three to one. If I go one to one, it's pretty darn good looking, okay? Now, when I go over to the raw compressed, and I do the same thing, where I crank the shadows up all the way, once again, I'm recovering all the data. So let's take a look at raw uncompressed and raw compressed. And of course, we'll zoom in here to the same location at a one to one. And we'll see that there's a lot of data in there. It's looking pretty darn good. Okay, so let's back out of there. Now let's go over to the JPEG. And the first thing I notice about the JPEG is that look at the difference in the sky color. Look how nice and bright and vibrant the sky color is we go to the JPEG. It's already a little purple, it's a little washed out. All right, it's really not looking that good. And the reason why is because the JPEG that the camera delivers, it's baked in all of the information that it captured on the sensor. When you download and you use your raw photographs, your raw photographs capture and give you all of the data that the sensor receives. But when you have a JPEG, the problem we have is that it is taking all of the information and it's baking it into what it thinks it should look like for you, all right? So we already have a bit of a color shift here. And by the way, there's no picture profile and everything was brought into Lightroom in camera neutral. I don't want anything changed from uh, what the camera is uh, capturing. So let's take our shadows and crank them all the way up. And as you can see, sure, it uncovers some data, all right? It does a pretty nice job of it, okay? And it's looking pretty good. Not too shabby, all right? Not too shabby at all, all right? But the big difference is what you're gonna see is gonna be on, 
Okay, so here's uncompressed raw, compressed raw, and the JPEG. And the JPEG's already kind of it's already kind of washed out. It's going to need some more uh, help. Now, let's look at the other end of things with the white point. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to hold the, the Alt or Option key. It's a uh, Option key for a uh, Mac, uh, Alt key for Windows. And I'm going to press it down, I'm going to hit the whites, and I'm going to take the whites up until the whites start to appear. And you could see that means that's where it's pure white, where it would be blown out. There's the, the uh, brightest part of the sky. So let me back that down. So I got to about, boom, about 24, 25 before we were blown out. Okay, somewhere in that range. I go to the compressed and do the same thing and I start to blow out oop, somewhere around 27 so it seems like the compressed is holding the whites a little bit better okay now I'm gonna go over here to the JPEG and I go to turn the whites on and guess what it's already blown out look it I'm at minus three I mean look at look at this I'm already blown out I have to take this down look at all this data is gone okay look at there's the whites all the way down the data is gone okay so the bottom line here is that when you look at the JPEGs it just does not have the same dynamic range that you have on the raw files whether compressed or uncompressed and if I really wanted to mess around with these files all right to make them look good I would have to kind of probably work with my highlights here with this JPEG to kind of get some of that so it's out of the way so deduct that a little bit you know try to increase the clarity bring the vibrance way up and when I go back to let's say the uncompressed raw I already have vibrant colors in here and I haven't touched anything I was able to bring the whites up I don't need to take the highlights down because all right, uh, I'm good because the whites were not blown out. All right, I could bring my black point in. My black point is good. If I bring a little bit of clarity and just a little bit of pop in here, and look how good it is. Again, not a big deal between uncompressed and compressed raw, but certainly a big deal with the JPEG. So as you can see, there really is not a big difference between compressed and uncompressed raw. So with that being said, unless you really need to, unless you really need to push the envelope, I would say that shooting raw compressed is perfectly fine. Uh, the next thing is that the JPEG. We've had this conversation before in a previous tutorial. If I am shooting something that I'm lighting and I am going to be uh, lighting it perfectly in the studio or on location where I'm lighting it and it's going to be a really good exposure where I'm not going to be taking advantage of really any type of a big dynamic range then I think it's fine to shoot JPEG. It really doesn't matter. And I've done a commercial jobs, and you guys know this, some of you, um, where I actually shot JPEG because I was doing headshots. There were 5,000 people there. Uh, it was going to be for online only. I was lighting it properly. There was no reason for me to fill up all of my uh, drives with, uh, with all, all those raw files. Now, I, I had a comment on that where someone says, well, if you can't afford a $60, you know, two terabyte <laughs> hard drive, Listen, I'm dealing with 40 plus terabytes of data that I can store, okay? I do this professionally. I do this every single day. This is how I earn every single penny. So if I could save money on storage, because my storage costs thousands and thousands of dollars, if I can save money on that, I'm going to. So for the rare occasion, you know what? I'm getting off, uh, off the beaten path here. The bottom line is, we should be shooting raw in most instances, and I think there's no problem shooting compressed raw. This is Jeff. Thank you very much for being here. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Just as important, if you're going to watch it, hit the like button. Just please keep pounding on that like button for me. That's really important to help me grow this channel. Thank you, and have a good day.